Telling me you had to kind of learn about the business side now more so, right? Dealing with that situation. Yeah. How's that adjustment been? I still don't know how the fuck the music business works. I don't. I don't get it. Does anyone? I don't think anyone gets it. <laughs> we're all just kind of here, and we're just like thinking that it's all gonna be over tomorrow. So. Except future. Except future. <laughs> Who has it all figured out? No, but part of the deal is and also you trying to build other artists too, right? Right, right. So the thing with Warner was is they really believed in what I was trying to do. Um, and the vision. It wasn't about it wasn't about the money. It's not about trying to get me to make a single. It wasn't about uh, exploiting what I had built before and realizing that they could make a lot of money off it. I really came into it like I want to be, I want to create like, like a franchise of, of artists and, and music so they kind of were like in it for the long haul. He literally said like, you don't have to have a hit if you don't want, like, we'll wait, we're patient, I'm not worried about it. I literally had people where I like played them jump and they were like, we need that. And I'm trying to show like concepts, and they're like, "No, we just need that." Give me three more of those. Give me three, yeah. literally. Yeah. Give me three more of those. Oh, that's you jump on the new album. Right. You don't mind making, but you don't want to just be limited to that. Right. right? But I, that's what I was afraid of. You know, you know how you thought I was depressed before. Jesus, like if I woke up and I, if an A and R told me how to make my music, told you know what I mean, like. Yeah. Limited your creativity. That's scary. This is my. This is all I have. It's only this. Is it. You know what I mean? Like this. Is, I mean, I have things in my life. I'm saying this is my outlet. This is pure. This is me to you. You know, there's not. There's nothing in between. It's straight like that. So, I was terrified of somebody telling me how to. T it's a, it's a conversation. I was terrified of someone trying to speak for me. Something you also have is a, is a girlfriend, man. <laughs> that you addressed on Rain and Shine. Talk about, talk about yeah. that record and that, and that significance. Because you said that wasn't necessarily made at the best of times in the, in the relationship. Damn it, Elliot. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, relationships are difficult. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, it, it, uh, we've, we've done a lot of growing. You know, I, I think we've, our relationship has adapted to our reality. Because it's, uh, it's, it's 2015, it's not 1950, so it's like, like it's, it's different ideas of what a relationship can be, can't be. So, so at that point, when I made that record, yeah, Rain of Shine, R -O -S. yeah, ROS, I was like, uh, we, we were on good terms, but, you know, I was like, you know, it's like I just wanted that comfort so bad. It was rough. I don't know. Was, I, I have a hard time. To, I don't know how. Is to, that the toughest? Put, I don't know how to put it into words. You know, how do you put love into well, into words like that? Did that song help the relationship come to a better understanding? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, always, I always think that that can fix the problem. Like you know what I mean? Like there's an issue. I'll make a song. <laughs> you know, that doesn't work. It was like reality. That, that moment for me, which was, I think, kind of for the first time, a uh, actual fear of that it what might actually be on its way to a close. Mm. You know, which I never thought was a possibility. So I guess the common theme is so much of this album is, is, you, is I guess why you also get resentful of this whole happy tag is like, to me, what we get away is so much of the album is you tackling y your fears, too. There are and, a lot of them. And there's a lot of, you know, religious themes. You mentioned God a lot. You mentioned mortality. Like, why do you think that comes up so much in your music also? I view music as today's religion. You know, like, uh, what I see 
how I feel about music is religious. It's an ex like it's it's a higher power type thing. So I view all artists as kind of the new prophets and and like the people like. Mm. It, 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 it. <laughs> that's how. That's how I think. I think that's what it is. It's beautiful because God as a concept has become so much more abstract now. Yeah. It used to be like God is this dude. That it's a guy. First of all, that's like that was the thing. Like we knew that God had a penis. Like you know, like, yeah, God's a guy. Um, but so I think I like how now it's more about the individual. You know, we are God. One song, he's like, my mama raised me a God. Which right. Is a, a powerful statement for. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone is. Yeah. You know, and I think that's another thing is I think that because of like what we've learned, right? We've learned God is. This, this dude that, and Jesus, you know, it's like that's God, and you know what I'm saying. But so when when someone says, "I'm God," right, people are like, oh, "Blasphemy," you know. <laughs> like why, why, why is that so? Why is that such a crazy concept to think that all of us could be, yeah. that could be the higher power, you know, inside of us. Another strong statement you make about life, you say the world don't give a fuck about your loneliness. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a bar. <laughs> well, but that was the other thing is that you make so many sad songs and it becomes so easy. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 be, it, be, it became not as challenging to sit there and talk about everything I, uh, it's sad. You know, it's like, um, but also like, you can't have good without the bad, so I think it's important to have both. Is the world desensitized? Because you say sometimes a lot of too much self-deprecation in right. culture. Like, right. So, so is it, when you say the world don't give a fuck about your loneliness, it's almost like, well, you're not receiving that back. That right. That people I really mean, care. This, that's not what I want to promote is loneliness. You know, I don't like, you know, like, hey, man, that's tight. Everyone that likes me go sit in a room for two years. You know? How's the tour been going with the energy and performing these new songs? How, how have they connected? I can't even explain it. It's, it's the most immediate reaction I've ever had to a project, which feels so that there's no better feeling in the world. Because when I didn't watch the movies, um, I would perform the songs, and a lot of people that were at the shows like didn't know them. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's You're not like, fun. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to see that immediate reaction, that's like it's, it's beautiful. It's a conversation. So like, dude, I was I, for, before I started the tour here. I went to Europe, and we're in fucking Netherlands and Germany, and they're fucking rapping all the words to the new album, and it's it's dope because I was I didn't want to go on tour until like down the line because I want to make sure everyone knew the album before I toured it. Yeah, because it makes it better for everybody, but. It's it, it's been great. Are you concerned at all? Because sometimes members, especially like Eminem, like worried about touring so much, it may put you in situations that you may relapse or may go too far with the lifestyle. Like you worry about living this hectic pace of being on such an extensive. Because you're about to be on a super long extensive tour of maintaining the, the yeah. progress you've made. Health is a it's a journey. I drink a lot, which isn't good. You like that whiskey, that James? Yeah, well, it's how I it's like bat, like it's like how I sleep a lot of times. Just me in bed with a bottle of Jameson. It's all about changing the radio station and learning how to adapt. And so, like now, I'm trying to like eat healthy and, you know, I'm trying to get onto my workout and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, but it's actually easier for me to not relapse and 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 uh, get high on the road. Because there's too much positive energy. Mm. Every night you're coming out to people that love what you do and that love the work you, you, you make. So you're a selfish piece of shit. You deprive them. Yeah, of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just worked. How am I going to work two and a half years on an album, put it out, it goes great, and then I'm going to fuck up a tour because I have some time in a day, so I want to get high. You know, like, there's too much positive. Every night there's, there's light. You know, every night there's there's positive things happening. Yeah. There's not, it's not a, it's it's actually great for my state of mind to 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 see people that love me every day. Speaking of people love you, man, we'll ask some, open some questions up, have some fun with it.
Yeah. I might chime in with my questions too, but we should open up. Let's let the fans get some questions in. All right, Alicia, you got a question first. All right, what's your, what's your question? You were working on the album and whatnot. Like, I used to like, want to know, like, how does it feel to like, you know, be back out there? I forgot how much I loved it, actually, to be real, because I was just so used to creating all the time. So I've been having a fucking blast every night, you know? So to come out and, and it's basically just hanging out with people that love the music and we're performing together. It's fun. So it feels great. Do you still love performing the older stuff? Like, what's what in the main yeah, stage yeah. and the set list? You know, best day ever, Trump stays. Why are you whispering? Yeah. You just say it with that confidence of a rapper. Man. No, no, no. This is, this is facts. Uh, Nike's on my feet stays. Right. Wait, hold up. Come to the show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, you got, yeah. I just want to say, first of all, love the album. Thank Amazing. you, man. Personally, and this is what I really was wondering since uh, yesterday. I just want to know what was going on with that Clubhouse video, bro. So the idea with the Clubhouse video is it's more of a live performance idea. And it's kind of a concept that came from Pitchfork and the, and the director that they had this synchronized swimming squad that I was like, that's awesome. I'm totally down <laughs> for that. So, I always wanted to do that. So it was really, it was really fun. And a lot, a lot of people ask me, like, why isn't the regular audio in the, in the video, right? So the concept behind these... Um, what they're gonna do is, it's like a live performance, so just it's a different idea. What I think is cool about it is, I d like recorded it there while I did it, so like it sounds like I'm in a swimming pool area. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean it's not as clean as the regular audio, but it's just kind of a different take on it. Are you proud of the videos of this new project? Yeah, dude, all the videos have been fun, cool, like weird, and, uh, great. Why do you fun. think you want to be kind of unconventional and weird with with the I visuals always to this do. project? I don't like making regular videos. Hey, what's shaking? How you what's living? Up, good, Yo, man. being that I was a fan since she was calling yourself Easy Mac and all that, I even went to. <laughs> day once. What advice would you give young artists such as myself to keep it pushing throughout all the negativity and all the depression, all the BS that be happening nowadays? You gotta um, kind of decide what you, what what your the reason you're doing it for is. I think a lot of people come in with the idea of what's gonna get me popping, right? So they, they want to think of these marketing ideas or maybe something which can be cool. Just continue pushing yourself to, to make music that you're proud of and have a team of people that are down to continuously work with you. And the internet is a fucking motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like that could really be a tool. So I think you just, just push yourself and don't take a day off. Like really work. It's not just like, it's not enough to just be nice. You got to like, really work for it. Hey Mac, do you stay engaged with kind of what's going on now? Do you be going on random young rappers' SoundCloud pages and see what's popping? Like? I've been so wrapped up in this album that I haven't listened to a lot of music as much as I should, but now I'm getting back into listening to music again. Let's go. Let's go. Over but Mac has to call you first. And the, and the standing up right there in the blue. Now that you feel that you've cured your depression, what emotion do you want to channel next in your next project? Ooh. <laughs> Whoa! That this is what good. happens when you come to the crowd. That was good. I think the emotion is really. I really want to make more songs about love. I think, um, not that that's like a super new concept, but like, it's right. That's what I was gonna say. It's not a super. It's not discussed enough. I think it's it's really important. It's the most interesting concept known to. That there is, so that's kind of really what I want to get into then next. you haven't tapped into it as much. This whole album, like, there's only one song that really deals with, with love, so, yeah. That was a great question, but that's definitely what I want to get into next. With the beer. My question is, how do you really approach songwriting and beat making, and are they, like, similar, or do you take different avenues going down those? What really is going through your head for each of those processes? You know, the approach changes. I think music is a living, breathing organism, so it, it has to adapt and change. So sometimes the song, sometimes the song literally comes from me in the car and thinking about a phrase, right, a concept. Sometimes the beat comes from me thinking about a rhythm or like a, you know, a drum progression in my head. But sometimes it's literally like, like last night I made this beat, um, and uh, and I had no idea what I was gonna do, but I just kind of like put my hands down on the keys and it just happened, and I kind of like kind of zone out. 
you know what I'm saying? Like you enter a different world. That's how I like to look at it. You create a planet, and and you go there, and then at the end you kind of step back and look at it from a bird's eye view. Like I don't know if something's good or bad until later. While I'm making it, I'm always like, this is the best song. You know what I'm saying? Like you're really into it. You're like, this is the shit. This is the shit. And then you wake up the next day. Sometimes you're like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? So yeah, you gotta just you gotta you gotta be in it all the way. What does that work ethic come from, do you think? Why are you so driven to constantly create? My dad's a really hard worker, so maybe I get it from him. He's gonna be so geeked I said that. This is it. You say geeked. it again, what about your father? <laughs> the hunger to, to be like, as, to be uh, creating it the highest quality that's possible at the time. Like, I would say if I, if I was an athlete, um, I wouldn't smoke, drink, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't do anything because I, I would want to be in the gym, be as, jump as, shots. Yeah, like that. I would be, you know, at practice two hours early. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think, yeah. I mean, I think, I think for me, it's just the unquenchable thirst for like s satisfaction with what I, you know what I'm saying? It's it, I'm never like, I never think it's good enough. I never, I want to, I want to make something that didn't exist before, and that's kind of impossible. So, yeah, I guess I'm chasing the impossible. Um, I wanted to ask you: Are you someone who procrastinates? And if you are, how do you deal with it? Like, how do you snap out? Procrastinates? Yeah. Right after the hard work question. <laughs> um, then I don't do shit. Well, well, it's funny because, like, me personally, I, I, I'm working on music and creating, 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 um, and I procrastinate all the shit that I actually need to handle. Like currently, what I'm procrastinating, if you'd like to know, is I've, I have all these treatments in my email for a weekend video. And like, that's the shit I procrastinate, which I don't get why, like I should be fucking reading these treatments and just getting this off the ground, you know what I'm saying? But in my head, I'm just like, make a beat, make a beat, make a beat, make a beat, make a beat. <laughs> Larry Fisher right, inside right, you. you know what I'm saying? So, um, how I procrastinate is because I have fucking great managers and they hear me like, we need you to fucking read your email. That's like, that's really, if it wasn't for them, I'd be fucked. Why call the production side of you Larry Fisherman? Like, what, what does that come from, that idea? Because I like creating characters, you know? Like, I, I think that, like, like, Mac Miller is me. My name is Malcolm McCormick, but... Why'd you go with the Miller? Um, rolls off the tongue nicer. <laughs> <laughs> So like that, my music for Matt Miller is, is so, that's the thing, it's honest. Everything's very honest, it's vulnerable, it's, it's, it's truth, it follows my life, it follows uh, everything I'm going through. There's, there's, I'm never, if I'm sad, you get sad music. If I'm happy, you get happy music. If I'm mad, you get angry music. So I wanted to start creating things that existed outside of what I'm actually going through. So concepts that I've run into and can apply them into things that aren't confined by just what reality is for me. So Larry Fisherman was just a character. He's just like, I think to me, being like an old dude with a beard on a porch sounds like I love that, you know what I'm saying? So that's Larry Fisherman to me is just like this old wise man who smokes tobacco and pipes and Sits by the fire. Anti Rick Rubin? Was no, he's like, he's like, yeah, it's basically Rick Rubin. <laughs> no, Rick doesn't smoke. But uh, yeah, he killed, he hunts his own food. In the fucking neon jacket in a bat. Holy shit. What made you do the Delusional Thomas album? That's my favorite. Oh, thank you, man. Um, wow. That character is so far from, from my, uh, from who I am, or is it? You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think, I, I think that there is that, that, that horrible person inside of all of us. You know what I mean? Like he comes in your thoughts all the time, or she. And, uh, and it's just like a fucking piece of shit. And like I wanted to give that piece of shit in my head some, some shine. I kind of, <laughs> like, all right, man, piece you fucking talk. You want to you talk? Let's go. So I think I just wanted to create basically just like the worst human being I could think of. Uh, and, and, uh, right, yeah, yeah. As an up and coming artist, I guess my question to you would be, uh, when you look back at the beginning of your career, when you were you know, working, trying to get on, 
Was there a specific person in your life who you would say finally opened the door for you? I think like like Wiz blowing up out of Pittsburgh was huge for me. You know what I mean? Like before before him, no one from Pittsburgh had been on that on that level, and the timing was pretty crazy for me. So, um, um, so you had someone that opened the door and, and it brought all this attention to the city, and then I kind of just fucking like snuck in, like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <Yeah>, um, <laughs> what's up? And then going as far as like different, like Q, my homie Q. Uh, he made me feel like shit was super official at a young age, which uh, helped me, which just helped motivate me to work harder. You know, like, even if we didn't have a lot, like, me and him used to have meetings, like, he five pages of ideas, like, having somebody right there with you that's like, let's go, let's get this, let's get this, this we should do da, 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 da. Having that, like, makes you feel like you're doing something, regardless of how big, so, yeah. Cool, Definitely. thanks, man. Oh, Check for dope. Me. Hi, my name's Joe, and my question is, uh, do you have a routine you like to keep on when you're on tour? And did you bring a, a studio tour bus with you, like on the Macadelic tour? Routine? I'm trying to create one for this tour, because in the past, my routine has been lay in the bunk and go on, like, sit there until I go on the show and then get wasted and then wake up and then wait till you're not hungover and then, but that's not good. So, <laughs> okay, kids. <laughs> it's not. So, like, this, for instance, like, I'm not, I don't drink as much on stage anymore. Like, I'm really trying to, like, have a routine that involves uh, oh, yeah. keeping, keeping tour to being more about just the show. You know, like, actually going to see some shit in cities. So, you know, getting out there and having some fun. And I don't have the studio bus because that shit was expensive. <laughs> um, but I do have like a little setup, so I've been like making beats every night and all that good stuff. Hold on. Do you think like you'll be making any like other genre type of albums or mixtapes? Cause me personally, I love the uh, you mixtape. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. I, you know, I always you blush. blush my I dude. blush when people tell me they like my singing. I really do. Yeah. Um, uh, that's because I always thought I was such a bad singer. Yes, the, my next, my next, I don't want my next project to be a rap project. I want it to be different. So I'm trying to figure out what type of genre to do and, and how to, to make it unique to me. Like Larry Lovestein, like I love Larry Lovestein. Yeah. But I think my idea at that time was to make you and then make me. I think it was gonna be the next one, I forget. Um, but definitely, like that's what I really want to do. I'm just trying to figure out like how to do it. I wanted to have a real um, like push with this album and not put out all these songs and everything. But now that this is done, now that we this is out, and once I ride this out, I'm kind of about to, my plan is to kind of just go off. So, so yeah. this impact of this project, the positive reception, all the all the strong feedback, the tour, everything, you just fueled you for more. I thought it was gonna be a while till I had the itch to do anything creatively anymore. Um, just cause I put so much into this one. And literally like I've been every night, like I got the itch. Do you yeah. see it in me? You know, I got I, I need to create. Before we go, like why do you think you said a line, I'm too obsessed with being a great one. Why do you think that even being less obsessed, why at the end of the day, you're gonna be recognized and you're gonna, you're gonna have a legacy that people respect? It's just, what are you chasing? And I, and I think, when, at one point, I was so obsessed with people understanding that, I, like, what I was doing, but it's okay for them not to, um, uh, and you got to give people time, and, and it's just the wrong thing to focus on, is to be in a top five list, you know? It's, it's, it's not, that's not... Progressive, you, you're trying to, if your goal, if my goal is to, to be in every conversation when you talk about who are the three best rappers right now, like, no, you, I love you, but I don't, like, my goal is not to, you to, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, of course. You to say you that. that, that yeah, you don't exactly. have to worry about that validation. Right, like, my goal is just to, 
to, like I said, to just try and get somewhere where I feel like creatively, like there's nothing more to do. You said I'm all by myself, just, I got no competition. Right. And you feel like you're on top of your game. Yeah, I mean, I do feel like I'm doing pretty well right now. If I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Which, is like, which is cool, like, to see that transition coming from, like, coming from someone who's sitting there and being depressed and then, and then now being like, you know what, fuck this shit, I'm killing shit and that's okay. Like, um, like I'm not, I don't feel bad about it. I don't feel bad that that the album's doing great. I don't feel bad that I, that I fuck with the verses on there. I don't feel bad that the shows are awesome. I feel great about it. So that's just a beautiful transition. We want you to keep transitioning, man. Keep doing it, man. Thank you, Mac. Thank you. Everybody, welcome Thank back, Mellow Crown. You did good, bro. It's over. You did good? Yeah. Good. I told you I wanted to open up to the fans. Sometimes we want to do the fans, but I was like, these fans were like, oh, 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 oh. Their questions were incredible. They were really good. They were good, man. I'm selling Wilson for that.